I am here because today in Wilkes-Barre, the soldiers of the 109th are celebrating their homecoming in the armory, and they are missing one soldier. I'm here because in December I became a founding member of the new organization, the Gold Star Families for Peace. We are 50 families who have lost loved ones in Iraq, and we do not want our numbers to grow. We are families driven to speak the truth about the war, and we've earned the right to question this war. And we will continue to be a voice and a presence for our loved ones. My boy, Sherwood Baker, came to live with my family on Veterans Day in 1974. He had been abandoned and neglected by his biological family, and from a very shaky start, Sherwood grew tall and loud and very challenging. He knew how to push and pull the patience of everybody he came in contact with. And my friend Lynn is with me tonight. She was his godmother, and it took both of us and many more to raise this child. <laughs> but for all those reasons, his mischievousness, his, his loudness, he was a delight. He was the favorite babysitter for all the kids in the neighborhood because he knew how to have a lot of fun and still be a protector of little ones. He loved music. He loved to laugh. He was an entertainer who became a competent musician and he became a fantastic disc jockey. Our family, I bet like many of yours, have worked for social justice for many years. We like to think of ourselves as a peace family. We marched against the wars in Central America. Our church was a sanctuary for a refugee family in Guatemala. We demonstrated against the first Gulf War and we vehemently opposed the war in Iraq. My kids went to countless demonstrations along with Lynn's kids, and I think my kids really didn't know that Washington, D.C. was any place other than the place you went to demonstrate. <laughs> Took years for them to discover the Smithsonian. <laughs> sometimes they liked going to meetings and demonstrations, sometimes they really didn't like it at all, but their favorite campaign of all was against war toys. And I know that some of you probably were in the war toy, anti-war toy campaigns. And we used to have a little sticker that said, warning, this toy is dangerous to your child's spiritual and mental health. And we would set the kids loose in <laughs> Toys R Us, <laughs> department stores, and they'd take those warning stickers and put them on guns and missiles and rifles, and they just loved it. Like little gorillas for peace. <laughs> Sherwood went to King's College in Wilkes-Barre, and he had a little boy when he was 21. When Sherwood told me in 1997 the unsettling news that he was considering joining the National Guard because he wanted to get some money to help pay his college loans, and he wanted to help his community, the danger seemed remote to me. And to my every objection, he said, Mom, don't worry. The Pennsylvania National Guard hasn't lost anybody in combat since 1945. A year ago today, the first Saturday of March, I stood in a parking lot in Fort Dix, New Jersey, and held my eldest boy in my arms, and fought off the tears and I can still feel the warmth of his big chest next to mine. I realize now it's branded on my consciousness. I love you, Mumble. Each of our family held him and whispered to him, clinging and trying so hard not to fall apart. It must have been excruciating for him. He was on his way to Iraq. And he had an oath to uphold to his country, and he had promised us that he would return safely with his men. That evening we watched him walk away from us 
to go into his barracks. A full moon rose majestically in the sky, and I remember this so clearly how huge and brilliant it was. I'd never seen the world appear so large in the sky before. And I thought I would mark by the moons the times it passed until Sherwood would come back to us. But not more than two moons had passed. On the rainy evening of April the 26th, I sat in my car for a few minutes to hear the news from Iraq before going into the house. Two soldiers had been killed earlier in the day. I knew it takes eight hours to notify a family. I calculate the time. We had heard nothing. We were spared. But just a few minutes later, I opened my front door to see a man with medals on his chest, standing in the dim light. Are you sure what Baker's mother, he said. And I began to scream and fell to the ground. He had come to tell me that Sherwood had become the first Pennsylvania National Guardsman to die in combat since 1945. When we buried Sherwood on May the 4th, I knelt beside his coffin and I vowed to him, I will not be quiet. I will speak the truth for him. The truth. The war is a lie. Betrayal of the nobility of our armed services, of the promise of our country. And that betrayal and that lie continue to this day. Now, a lot of times people say to me, Well, you want to protest, but what do you suggest? What's your solution? And one of the things I say is, I don't have all the answers. But here's the thing I know absolutely, that if we're ever going to get to peace, we have to be willing to tell the truth. My voice is small, one in millions. My voice is part of a roaring ocean of grief and love and passion. Somewhere in America, right now, a man with medals on his chest is mounting steps and preparing to give a mother the worst news of her life. And he may well watch her fall to the ground and scream. But he's obliged by protocol not to touch her. That's left to those who come to her and her kin to try to console and wrap their arms around the grief those who knew and loved that soldier, those who will forever wreck in their lives by the moment they heard about the death. And in Iraq, what family remains untouched by the death of possibly 100,000 people? Since so Sherwood's death, the family and I have spoken out for the truth and against this war at every opportunity and to everyone who will listen to us. So in the name of the fallen and the lost, with all the power of the love we possess, let's follow that flame of love and be the persistent voice. Stop this war, find another way. For all time, we have always been called to this task.